Hello and welcome to another Seeds of Flourishing episode. I nearly said Seeds of Musings there. Seeds of Flourishing. So for a little while now I've been trying to sort of line up my Seeds of Flourishing thematically with certain days of the week. And long time viewers of the channel will probably have noticed that. Now, one thing I wanted to do that sort of lines up with that thematic alignment is to revisit something that I used to do a lot on Saturdays. And I thought it would be interesting to take the Saturday morning episode of Seeds of Flourishing and present this in the modern era. So what was it that I used to do on a Saturday? Well, a big thing for me on Saturdays was music discovery. And when I think back to how that worked, in the early days, it consisted of me going around friends' houses, friends houses and listening to various albums, which I've probably mentioned in other videos. And then it progressed to me and one or both of my brothers walking to East Grinstead from Forest Row where we lived in Sussex. Um, so from our home village up to the nearest local town along the railway line, the disused railway line, and going record shopping. And we'd come back, um, play whatever music we'd bought, on the Saturday and then spill it over into Sunday as well. Sunday was another popular day for listening to music, particularly in the afternoons, actually. But yeah, Saturday mornings was always good for music rediscovery. Then when I got my first car, I was able to go further afield. And subsequently over a number of years, before I eventually moved to Nova Scotia, I ended up visiting Tunbridge Wells every Saturday morning where I got to know an owner of a small independent record store and we'd often have chats on Saturday morning about music and he'd recommend certain records. And after I'd finished in that record store, then I'd pop over the road to a, another independently owned record store and they'd have a lot of classic albums which were like three for £18 or something like that. And I'd do a lot of infilling of classic albums there. So, you know, carrying on, Saturday mornings was my music discovery or music rediscovery in a lot of cases. And then once a month, I'd often purchase a copy of Terrorizer magazine to catch up with extreme music. And then the following week on from purchasing that, I'd then be back in Tunbridge Wells and be probably buying some music that I saw mentioned in their album reviews or if it was an end of year chart, um, doing a bit of infilling there for the previous year. So I suppose where I'm going with this is Saturday mornings historically was always like new music discovery or old music rediscovery mornings. And I thought it would be interesting to reimagine that in the modern era and for a while now I've been drawn towards the genre section in album of the year and been fascinated by just the number of different genres it lists here and how many of these the first time I looked in here I saw for the first time. Now I'm aware that some of these are just more granular versions of genres that I'm already aware of. But I thought it would be an interesting exercise in this video and hopefully going forward, if this proves popular over subsequent episodes, to pick a genre that I'm not familiar with. And I'm also going to pick genres where I think I might have an idea what, it, it, what it's a subgenre of but I'm just curious, so I'll go with some of those as well. I'm not going to pick 
necessarily genres that I am familiar with unless someone in the comments section puts forward a particular genre that they've noticed as I've gone down. So, for instance, if someone was to pick, say, I don't know, Britpop, and they weren't familiar with it, although I'm familiar with Britpop, I'd be quite prepared to you know, have an episode on Britpop and see where maybe a, a new a new view, a fresh view on that using the technology that we have now and the websites, where that takes us. So a little bit of explanation as to what's on screen and what isn't. So we have the album of the year genre page, which is going to be our starting point. We have Wikipedia, where I'm just going to do a look up of the genre, just to get some idea of how easy it's going to be and whether I'm going to have to enlist the help of other websites. I'm always probably going to start with these as my starting points. All music I've got open, Last FM, Music Map, and also a Google Docs to keep a record here. And I'm going to decide how I might distribute the results, whether I can fit the results into the description or whether I need to have a link to an online document to do that. And I'll decide after the episode goes out and you'll see the appropriate links or description in the description section. Also, you'll notice a Python console screen here. I've actually got my code off screen to stop things getting busy. Plus, there's a few client IDs in there. Obviously, I don't want on screen to, to um, interact with the APIs. This is to speed up the process a little bit. Most of what I'm going to do here can be done using Last.fm and Spotify and various other services. But it just means I can speed the process up a little bit. So hopefully these episodes will run under the hour. Um, otherwise, without this, uh, yeah, it could be several hours. Also off screen, I have uh, a Spotify session open. And the reason behind that is I just want to review some of the music as I go along. Now, I won't be able to play it. So I've switched off my computer sounds because obviously if I start playing music, the um, the video, well, there's a number of things that could happen. Um, it could be demonetized or it could be, you know, I could could get blocked. Who knows? You just never know with music. So it's not worth going there. Um, but I, I do need it in case I just need to review a particular album very quickly while I'm going through what I'm doing um, to speed up the disc again, speed up the discovery process. Also, I'm going to use it because one of my programs needs the Spotify URL as well. So. Let's dive in. That's a fairly long introduction. Obviously, in future episodes, I won't be explaining this. I'll just assume everybody's seen the first episode. So, yeah, this is the album of the year music genres section. And you can see rather conveniently they have the main music genres with the top album. So album of the year is a an aggregate review site I suppose I'm trying to think of a good word for this basically it brings together album reviews from critics and users and presents them in in sort of order of popularity and there's various ways that you can slice and dice this but uh, in the genre section you can see it's got all the sort of major genres and then the top albums as far as the critics and the user votes are concerned, and I think this is probably critical votes here, um, for those. Now, obviously, there's other sites that do a similar thing. The reason why I've gravitated to this is because they do categorise stuff by genre. Now, I do know, obviously, that genre can be problematic, but it's just an interesting starting point. So let's go down the list here. I mean, again, some of these are, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Concatenation or portmanteau of of words. 
Um, so we've got abs abstract hip hop. And there we've got agrotech. So obviously I'm going to be skipping over things like alternative metal, alternative rock. This looks like an interesting one for a future episode, ambient dub. I always find dub to be fairly ambient already, so I'll be curious about that. But as I was scrolling up and down earlier, something caught my eye in here because I misread it. I thought that said Britpop, but it says Bitpop. Now, I don't think I've come across the term Bitpop before. I'm Obviously, I can see that there's probably connections between this and Chiptune and also things like um, some of the bands within that very broad category of something called Nintendo Core. Now, the Nintendo Core covers a whole slew of sub sub genres and styles. But Bitpop obviously sounds incredibly specific and it's got me curious. So I think today's episode, we're going to explore Bitpop. So let's go in here and just see. And this is the reason, or one of the reasons why I like doing this is that we get this nice graph. So it'll allow me to sort of look in and see, okay, Obviously, again, we're looking at through the eyes of Album of the Year website, but seeing what years the uh, the albums in their database, you know, the volume, sorry, the frequency of albums for particular years, and also get some idea of how long the term may have been used. Also, to see if there's a critical highest rated Britpop albums. So... I'm going to make a note of this already. So let's, um, I I'm going to apologise because I know through this I'm going to say mistakenly Britpop, but I am obviously mean to say Bitpop as opposed to Britpop. And let's just grab, see if we can grab the rather nice album cover by the Crystal Castles. Now I am aware of Crystal Castles, but I'm curious as to what else might come up through this lens of Bitpop. There we go. Okay, so let's pull up in here. To a bit pop and see what's oh, nice, so you know, reasonable. Oh, circuit bending, I like the sound of that already. So, the first thing I'm going to do in parallel with this, just while we review this, I'm going to run my Python script that lets me quickly search for related Wikipedia articles. Okay, just so I've got this. So what have we got at the top? Just going to grab that. that in and we'll just go back here so what does it got here bit pop is a type of electronic music and sub genre of chip tune okay so it is a sub genre sub genre of chip tune where at least part of the music is made using the sound chips of old 8-bit or 16-bit computers and video game consoles like the sound of this already among systems in used include the Atari 8-bit computer, Commodore 64, Nintendo Entertainment System, and Amiga. The sounds produced from these systems can be combined to any degree 
with traditional instruments such as guitar and drums, modern synthesizers, drum machines, or vocals and sound effects. So, yeah, that sounds like definitely like a variation of uh, Nintendo Core, not quite so uh, brand specific. Okay, here we go. Oh, here we go, yeah. So Britpop uses a mixture of old and new equipment, often resulting in a sound which is unlike chiptune, although containing 8-bit source sounds. For example, a Britpop production may be composed of almost entirely of 8-bit sounds. A bit Britpop production may be composed, compro composed of almost entirely of 8-bit sounds, but with live vocal or over, overlaid live guitars. Conversely, a Britpop production may be composed of almost entirely of live vocals and instruments, but feature a bass line or lead melody provided by an 8-bit device. Okay, one of the first pioneers of Bitpop were Welly Erdball. Okay, so they're a German band. I've not heard of this band before. Do they come up anywhere here? Don't see that. Okay. Anyway, back to the article. With the heavy use of Commodore 64 for the first album in 1992. Okay. So we need to make a mental note. I'm going to copy paste this into the article. Let me see if I'm just going to try something. There used to be, oh there we go, there's my printable version, yeah so I was trying to do that, there used to be a way where you used to be able to strip out all the rubbish, but I don't think that's the case. Okay. Anyway, back to the article for a moment. Yeah, this first episode is going to be a little bit lumpy while I establish the uh, the way I'm going to do this. Oh, here we go. Being a German-speaking group, not using the term bit pop and who don't travel by plane. They remain popular among people listening to industrial music or electro cl clash. Britpop music began gaining popularity towards the end of the 1990s. The first electro clash record, I-F's Space Invaders Are Smoking Grass, has been described as burbling electro in a vocoded homage to Atari-era hijinks, particularly Space Invaders. Okay, the Beastie Boys Out of Space sci-fi themed album Hello Nasty in 1998 included, among the other potentially influencing tracks, a distinctively video games sound themed original composition track Unite. Trance Song Conecraft 400. Oh, so Malcolm McLaren wrote an article on bit pop and chip music. 2003. Used by acts such as Beck, The Killers, The Postal Surface. Okay, so we've got some interesting connections here to well-established artists. Grime, dubstep. Let me see if 
we can pull that article up. the whole thing here let's just grab this I'm not going to go through the article but I just wanted to see anything interesting down the bottom. I'll include a link to this article as well as the link to the Wikipedia article. Right, let's run a few angles on this. So I'm going to do, I've got a little piece of Python code that does a look up a tag look up on last fm okay so let me grab that and place it in here Now, just to show you, I'm not sure in Last FM how that manifests itself. I was having a little bit of a practice earlier without. Okay. There we go. So yeah, you can do, obviously, not well, not surprisingly, a similar thing in Last FM. But there's the actual list by using the API. So that's pretty interesting. So yeah, what it will do is it will go through this, the, the last FM data um, is was originally collected through scrobbling. So they had a thing called a scrobbler, which uh, looked at people's listening preference preferences. And so what you see here is these are individual tracks, I believe. So who does it consider to be the earlier exponent of this? A word erdball. Okay. Well, this is a band I've definitely never heard of. And they're right down the bottom, actually. I know where that might be. Word herbal. Off camera, I'm just going to, or off screen, I am going to look them up on Spotify. So we'll start off with them. We've got tons of stuff here already. So plenty to play around with. Okay. And then I'm simply going to grab the link to the artist in Spotify. Okay. It's complete, as you know from Spotify, these links are 
just filled with a load of random letters and numbers that mean something obviously to Spotify. So And I'm just going to run my little program here to take the URL. And again, it's just going to save me drilling down off screen. Right. So this is the equivalent list. Uh, we're going to look at a few more artists uh, well, I'm going to run what Vel Erdball through the last FM if I can it might generate some weirdness because of the colon but we'll see and I'll do that in a moment but this is the because I have a similar one for last FM but this is the Spotify one So I'm going to grab this now before it because it will get pushed off the screen when I run the other one. So if you've not seen this particular little program I've written before, it simply goes through, looks up the genre tags for an artist in Spotify, but also um, yeah looks up when it's using the Spotify API. It also looks up the related artists and in addition to that for those related artists looks up their corresponding genre tags and then goes through uh, I'm trying to think when I downloaded this, but basically a, a CSV I have on my machine, which contains a CSV from another album review site called Best Albums Ever, and comes up with any rankings that are available on there. So we've got a couple here from Willie Erdball, and then it just goes through for all the related artists as well. Yeah. I may not even use need to use all music. So let me try running this little thing. So this this will look through last fm and again you can do this manually but it comes back with the 50 related artists using the last fm data now the only trouble with last fm i don't know how much people use scrub the scrubbler anymore so i do tend to find it works better with older artists but this band by all accounts have been around for a while now so we'll see but it may not like the colon in there. Um, so we'll see. Oh, we're good. So this is uh, on last FM. If you use the API to do this, when it returns a list, it returns the the match. And this is actually really good. Um, what I normally do when I look at the list, I, I sort of look at wh where the 50% mark is. And sometimes with some of these obscure um, genres, you find it falls off pretty quick. What you normally find is at the top you get the, so, you know, up here's the artist and then you get some side project they've got and then a couple of other and then boom it just the relationship gets really low this ratio gets really low the only th interesting thing here and this might again be based on 
the sort of data and the sort of things that people are listening to. If you remember, it mentioned about, I think, um, where was it? Industrial music or electro clash. The other thing that probably people that were listening to, to Bitpop back in 92 may have subsequently listened to, although I'm, I'm not sure at the point at which uh, the two, the couple of bands I'm going to mention became popular, is one of them is VNV Nation, and they're more of a they're more of a future pop band, and the other one, but I don't see it here, is is it Assemblage Twenty Three? I don't think I see them here. So this is actually a good sign because as this has run, it means that we've got the list here. So now what I'm going to attempt is to run my other piece of code, which will come back with album recommendations. So we'll see if some of this, the fact that it's accepted colons, it's just there's some characters that when you do uh, like an HTTP request to the API, um, it doesn't like it, and you have to. I have to spend quite a bit of time tweaking to get the corresponding, like alternate code. You know, one of those percentage, like spaces percentage twenty. I think that sort of thing. Like the um, I'm trying to think what the what the code is referred to. Um, not so much the ASCII code, but um, that other thing. Is it the UTF code? So it can be quite complicated and I've tweaked it over the years to deal with umlauts and various other um, characters because some of the band names are um, are in a, you know, are not in English. So it'd be interesting. It might, I'm not sure if I've got uh, this particular version of you as one of my exceptions in the code. Um, so I'll, I'll find out, I'll, I'll attempt to run this against the same band but what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this anyway now and we'll put this in our little music discovery document and see where we go so I just need to change this rerun it it looks the same. Now this is going to take a little bit of time because it's doing lookups on the lookups. And the things it's looking up are the most played album from data that's been collected by Last FM from their scrubbler. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Did I mess up there? Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to clean that up. So I had a feeling that they might not be happy. So at some point, yeah, I've got to tweak this to substitute that character with something else. Um, but I'm not going to do it in this episode. <laughs> so the good thing is that we have a list of bands. But uh, what I can do is see what, without going through that, this recommends. And 
this recommends. Oh, no albums found, no tricks found. Let me just click on the artist, see what happens. all the albums and that's in order of most popular so the Wundervolt the technique technique just in case I don't think this was in the document so we'll put that in as well Sorry, I misspoke this. This is the top 50 albums in Last FM for Bitpop. I'm just copying this. Okay, maybe the album's not available on Spotify. Again, you're at the, the mercy of So I'm just gonna bring this across. This is everything that's available on Spotify. So this is their ninety-four album. It looks like there's a bit of a hole here and I, I imagine well it's obviously Spotify haven't got the the licensing for certain albums I'm just gonna you won't be able to hear this but I just want to see what this sounds like so 94 So this one is on Spotify. Wow, it's it's a shame you can't hear this. I can't play it, but uh, it's pretty interesting, actually. It's got just just a first listen, first impression. It's got um, so I'm currently listening to the first track off of the off of this album. I think that was the one. Yeah. And I can hear lots of different things in there. Obviously there's a electronic element in there, but it, it sounds like this really interesting mashup. When I first started listening to the first track, which is an eponymous track, just named after the band, 
at first it, it sounded like, if, if it's possible, like up-tempo dungeon synth. And then I can hear elements later on in the track of almost like bordering on new German hardness. Not quite um, Rammstein or I'm trying to think of that other big band, um, is it Icebreaker? Um, but by getting close, that sort of stompy music, um, yeah, there's, a, there's another band. I mean, I can hear craft work in there, I can hear, um, the band that did yeah yeah the night the name's gone but there's a another electronic band that have a really stompy sound to them and uh yeah so what we'll do i think we've got plenty of uh of music discovery to go on here yeah, I would definitely check out this band as a starting point. Uh, it's taken me in a completely different direction. And they sound, which I was suspect, I'd suspected here, because now I've realised that, that Bitpop is a fairly broad church. In fact, I suspect what it is, is not dissimilar to Nintendo Core, but just with all the super heavy bands taken out you know the, I mean, like again their name escapes me but there's a number of heavier bands that do heavy metal interpretations of um you know computer games so i imagine it's uh, you know it's it's that sort of broad genre minus <laughs> the, the uh the sort of cover versions, the heavy metal cover versions of of uh, chip tune and various other stuff, very broadly. I and the other cool thing is I know none of these bands. I don't think there's any well, apart from Crystal Castles, but I don't see Crystal Castles mentioned down here. Um, but again, that's because you know I plugged in. Oh no, that was through plugging bit pop. So yeah, I definitely get a different uh, a different view depending on which service you use, and that's not surprising. Now so just excuse me, my brain is all over the place because I'm just so excited at uncovering all these new bands to listen to. Let me Let's try this. I haven't used this for ages. I'm pleased this is still around. This is Music Map. So this is another really useful website. I'll include a link to this. Let's chuck that in the bottom. There we go. Again, I'm just looking to see if there's anybody here that I recognise. Let's just go back to this. Yeah, I'm familiar with this, the SID station. And circuit bending. Let's 
So what's interesting is it does look like a bit pop sort of been absorbed into other genres and had an influence on them. I was just looking to see if there was any like pure bit pop artists that weren't you know established artists that were already working within a certain genre and absorbed in to that it seems to be like j-pop um mentioned there Okay, not, nothing much new to, to learn there. Oh, Yellow Mar Ma Magic Orchestra, there's, a, there's an old name. the same article that's up there okay well I'll include a link to this anyway so anybody that's interested can uh, can explore this and I think I've gone as deep as I need to go in in terms of the initial music discovery so now it's a question of me just outside of the episode going through some of this stuff and trying to bring it all together so Oh, here we go. I recognize some of these. Just going to rerun my overlap curve. I've got another version of this which looks at the top and just alphabetically at the genre, and sometimes it's Okay, that one, I need to grab, bear with me a moment while I'm across the right thing okay curious so what what this does is it, it's very crude at the moment but it it looks at the Spotify tag for the artist for the genre tag just looks at the first one and then sees what artists have the same tag in Spotify and what's curious is according to this at least um, there aren't any which is interesting let's just try it with another artist to make sure I haven't inadvertently broken the uh, the program at some point through fiddling around with it yeah that's that's more like you would get so that is actually working correctly so what I did there is I just put in the Spotify code uh, the way my code is I can have the full bit or just this bit at the end 
And I knew there for that one it had Dark Wave as the, the, the sort of alphabetically top genre. And then it just returned just those related artists in Spotify, which also share that genre. Over time, I'm going to change the code. So I, it obviously will list the um, the genres and then I can pick one rather than it just picking the first one. But I just haven't got around to that yet. So yeah, the th these ones here. Oh, there we go. That's interesting. So that sort of answers my question. Well, I remember I mentioned about future pop artists being on the list. So if those are the four related genres for Vel Erdball in Spotify, then that starts to make a lot of sense now. I don't know if it's the case whether there used to be a, a feature in here. I don't know if it works still. So if I do genre colon and then the genre. Those crystal castles have come up. Oh yeah, because that, yeah, so I was looking at that thinking, why didn't they come up there? But they wouldn't because what's happening here is that this is looking up article, um, bands that Spotify considers to be related to this band musically, even though Crystal Castles appear to share the same genre tag, it doesn't consider them to be musically similar as a, as these other bands that's interesting i didn't see crystal castles anywhere down here and they would have come up if uh, when i did that match on related artist and the tag of bit pop so one last thing then seeing as we came to crystal castles first through album of the year down the bottom here i sort of stayed away a little bit from crystal castle simply because i'm fairly familiar with them already um, so i'm just gonna come back in here and We run this against Crystal Castles. And I'll stick them down the bottom. Just to sort of compare and contrast. And then I'm going to cut that. in there cool I mean as this is in Google Docs I should also be able to save this link so rather than attempt to paste all of this in a description in uh, in YouTube so hopefully that was of interest um, at the moment it's going to be a little bit lumpy as I'm doing this as I sort of find my uh, What's the word? Find my mojo for this particular form of video. 
but I wanted to do uh, been wanting to do like a music recommendation video for a while now but I also wanted to try and do it like just off the cuff live makes it more interesting makes it you can see then I'm not sort of massaging the results as would be tempted to do if you you know do a a more planned episode so thanks once again for watching i'll catch you in the next video bye for now